Uh, our next lesson is a big one, and you'll notice at the top of your paper, if you have that in front of you, every header on every page says know your formulas, and that is the key to the ACT when you're doing one of these types of problems. They are very unlikely to provide you with any formulas on the ACT, so it's up to you to know them, or at least have a trick to get around not knowing them. So the first concept we're going to talk about is perimeter, and remember perimeter is the distance around the exterior of any shape. And if you're talking specifically about a circle, the perimeter of a circle is called the circumference. And that's where we run into our first formula. Uh, you can either use the formula pi times diameter for circumference, or you can use pi times 2 times the radius, or 2 pi r. The reason these are the same is because the radius is 1 half of the diameter. So if you double the radius, you get the diameter. Now, I always prefer this formula here um, because 2 pi r looks suspiciously close to pi r squared, which is a formula for the area of a circle, and I'd like to avoid that. So a rectangular lot that measures 150 feet by 200 feet is completely fenced. So I'll draw myself a little picture, and it's 150 on one side and 200 on the other. Now, they just want to know how long the fence is. That's another way of them saying what's the perimeter of this shape. So the first thing i got to remember is that a rectangle would have all four sides filled out, because they don't say otherwise. And when I add those all together, I get 700. Um, very common mistake is for children just to add the 150 and the 200, which gives them 350, which unfortunately is very wrong. Now, this is an irregular shape, and you could go ahead and find each of the missing little components and add them all together. But I do find that there's a lot of mistakes when children do that. Sometimes they forget a piece, or they mislabel a piece, or they count a piece twice. So what I want you to think about is if this horizontal segment is 26 units long, then that means if I was to add up all these other horizontal components on the top of the shape, they should all be 26 as well. So we've got two 26's for the lengths, and then if I look at my heights, I've got a 4, a 6, and a 4, so that's a 14, and that would mean that these heights added together on the right side also have to be a 14 in order for this to match up. So we have 26 plus 26 plus 14 plus 14, which gives us a total of 80 inches. Move it along. The radius of a circle is 3 centimeters. What is the circumference? And the directions on this problem say leave her answer in terms of pi. The ACT appreciates exact answers because they actually want to make sure they don't um, discriminate against anyone who cannot use a calculator for whatever reason. So they're often going to leave answers in exact form. So the radius is 3, and the first thing I have to think about is the circumference of a circle. Now, I like my formula diameter pi, so the first thing I have to figure out is I don't want the radius, I actually want the diameter. And then instead of typing pi on my calculator, I just leave pi in the answer, and that actually is my answer right there, 6 pi. Moving along, area of a parallelogram is base times height. Ooh, sorry, that's crooked. Um, base times height is also the area of a rectangle. That's not a coincidence. A rectangle is a parallelogram. So when I look at this parallelogram, the base would be the 3 and the 6 added together. So the whole base here would be 9 units. Now the height would be if you were to drop a rock. So it's got to be perpendicular to the base. And that would be the 4. So here's your height. So 4 times 9 gives us an area of 36. A common mistake on that problem is for children to use the 5 for the height, which rocks don't fall like that. Rocks fall, fall straight down, so that's not the height. Moving along. Shannon is going to tile a rectangular kitchen, and the countertop, or the countertop, and the countertop is 24 inches wide and 64 inches long. I feel a picture coming on. So 64 inches and 24 inches. Now if she's going to cover it in tiles, that means we need to find the area. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. The area of this countertop is a rectangle, so 24 times 64, which is 1536 inches squared on my calculator. Now here's the key to the problem. One tile is going to cover a 4 by 4 inch region. So if I think about one tile, he's not going to just cover up a normal 1 by 1 inch region. He's going to do 4 by 4, which is an area of 16. So I need to divide this total area by 16 square inches, which represents each individual tile. And when I do that, on my calculator, of course, because I don't feel like thinking today, it comes out to a 96. And that's the minimum number of tiles that Miss Shannon's going to need. Likely she'll need more, but they asked us for the minimum. 
area of a circle. You need to know this pi r squared. So diameter of a circle is 16. I always like to draw it out because it helps me realize when they said diameter, it's not even what I want to use. I need radius in order to find the area of a circle. So the radius would be just halfway. So if the diameter is 6, that means the radius is 8. So the area of our circle, and they want us again to leave our answer in terms of pi, radius squared, and then just throw the pi on the back end. So 8 squared is 64 pi. Okay, this problem's a little tricky. We have a 6 by 8 inch rectangle, and it's inscribed in the circle. And if you didn't remember what inscribed meant, they showed you a picture, so you're off the hook there. What's the area of the circle in square inches? Now this is an actual ACT problem, but I added the hint to it, so the ACT will not provide you with hints. Uh, my hint to you is to make a triangle to find the radius. Now the reason we need the radius is that's how you find area of a circle. And we can do this a couple of different ways. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to whoop, try my best to split <laughs> this rectangle in half and make a really big triangle. So if this side is 6 inches and this side is 8 inches, that means this side up here is also 8 inches. Since I know rectangles have right angles right there, I can go ahead and do Pythagorean Theorem and figure out that the diameter of this circle, or the hypotenuse of that triangle, is 10. Now that's the diameter of the circle. I want the radius. So if the diameter is 10, that means the radius is 5. I think I'm good to go. The area of a circle, remember, is pi r squared. And looking at the answers, they want the answers in terms of pi, so squaring my radius, I get 25 pi. Alright, that's a classic case of an ACT problem where they didn't outright tell you what to find, but you had to think about what you were missing and how you could reach your goal. The next concept is area of a triangle. So you can either use base times height divided by 2, or you can use the formula 1 half times base times height. They mean the exact same thing. So the vertices of a right triangle are located on the following coordinates. So I like pictures. So I'm going to draw myself a very ugly picture. Here's 0, 0. And then 4, 0 would be out here. And then 4, 5 would be roughly up here. Woo, that's ugly. All right, there's your triangle. And it is a right triangle. And now I think I'm going to label my dimensions on the side because they want to know the area of the triangle and I need to know those parts. So this base here goes from 0, 0 to 4, 0, so that's 4 units. This guy is 5 units tall. And I don't need the hypotenuse because I don't need that for the area of a triangle. I'm going to use the 1 half times base times height formula. So 1 half times 4 times 5, which leaves me with 10. All right, moving on. Uh, the area of a triangle is 45 square inches, the height is 5, what is the length of the base? So it might help you to write out the formula, and then we'll start substituting in values where they go. So this is unique because they actually tell you the area is 45. I'm going to plug that in where the area is located. Uh, they don't tell me the base, but they tell me the height is 5. Now it doesn't matter how you do it, but basically you need to solve for B. You could even plug in all the answer choices until you get it to work, um, but I think we can handle this. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this 1 half. So once I multiply by 2, those guys are gone, and I get 90 equals 5b, and then I could very easily just divide both sides by 5. And I get 18 inches. Okay, area of a trapezoid, a formula that we don't often think about, but we need to know for our UCT. It's 1 half times the sum of the bases, in parentheses, times height. And remember, height of any shape is if you were to stand at the top and drop a rock down, it would drop straight down. So the trick to this next question is they don't actually tell us the height. They told us the slant height, which is not the one we're looking for. I need to figure out, ooh, uh, that's not a straight line, how tall this trapezoid is. Now, good news, I think they gave us enough information to figure this out. This seems to be what's called an isos isosceles trapezoid, which is something they told me in the problem. So if it is 6 inches across this top base, that means it's 6 inches right here between them is two dashed lines. That leaves a total of 6 inches on the two edged triangles. Well, since they're the same size, because it's isosceles, they've both got to be 3 and 3. So now if I look at this triangle right here, 
I think we have a Pythagorean theorem problem where I could go ahead and do Pythagorean theorem to find the height. Uh, so we could say 3 squared plus x squared equals 5 squared. And after doing a little bit of solving, I got x equals 4. Now it would be great if you remembered that that was a special right triangle. He was a 3, 4, 5 that we often see on the ACT. It would have avoided a little bit of work for you, but if you didn't, it's okay. So let's go ahead and use our formula. 1 half times the sum of the bases, 6 plus 12, times our height we just found, which is a 4. So when I go ahead and multiply those on my calculator, I get 36. Now there are ways to avoid getting that problem wrong, even if you didn't know the formula. Uh, most people would split it up into a rectangle, two triangles like we did, and maybe they could kind of finagle their way to the right answer after that. Um, it could at least eliminate some of the answer choices on a multiple choice test. But your math teacher would really appreciate you just knowing that formula. Okay, this next question, you do need to know the formula, so let's go ahead and write that down. Area of a trapezoid is one half times the sum of the bases times the height. Now this time, just like that triangle problem, they gave us the area. So we're going to plug that in for the area. My two bases, they tell me one of them, but not the other. And it doesn't matter which one goes where. And the height I can see is a 2. So my job is to solve for h. So the first thing I'm going to notice is this 1 half and this 2, when multiplied together, are actually just going to cancel each other out. So I'm not even going to bother with them. So we have 20 equals base plus 3. And if I go ahead and subtract the 3 over, I get my base is 17, which is what they wanted. Okay, a cutout. A cutout would be like if you're making some cookies and you have a big slab of cookie dough and you cut out a piece and then the area of the dough that is left is what we usually are looking for in the ACT. So the formula for a cutout of any shape would be the area of the large shape and then subtract off the area of the small shape or the cutout. So in my figure that they showed me in problem number 12, we have two tangent circles, and tangent in this case means that the two shapes just come up against one another. They don't intersect, they just brush up with no space in between. Um, the diameter of the small circle is 10, and that happens to be the radius of the large circle. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to use our formula, which says find the area of the big circle, would be the big shape. And then we're going to subtract off the area of the small circle. Well, remember circles are pi r squared. So my big circle, his radius, remember, was 10, if I look at my picture. So pi r squared in his case, oops, excuse me, 10 squared would be 100 pi. Now my little circle, his radius, if I just think about going halfway across, would just be a 5. So pi r squared in his case would be 25 pi. And again, I left them in terms of pi. 100 pi minus 25 pi gives me 75 pi. Don't bother grabbing your calculator because they don't want an exact, they don't want a decimal answer. They do want an exact answer. Okay, volume of a box. A box, also known as a rectangular prism, is simply length times width times height. Or some of your geometry teachers expressed it to you as the area of the base times how tall the shape is. The height. So the volume of a box that is 8 feet uh, length, 6 inches width, and a height of 4 feet. Now there's a slight catch here. The 6 inches is a problem. Everybody else is in feet and they wanted the answer in cubic feet. So I'm going to have to go ahead and take 6 inches and say that's really just 0.5 of a foot because there's 12 inches in a foot. So now it is a very easy problem that I caught that little catch. Um, 8 times 0.5 times 4, and I think we get a 16 feet cubed. So trust me, the ACT would not be so easy as to give you a straight up multiply three numbers together unless there was a little bit of a catch in it. Nothing bad. Okay, this next problem is an old ACT problem. Uh, after a snowstorm, the city workers removed an estimated total of 10,000 cubic yards of snow. And if they were going to spread it on top of a football field, <laughs> how tall would the snow layer be? I don't know why they'd want to do that, but uh, I kind of work better when my picture makes sense. So I'm going to make this three-dimensional, kind of. Oops. Okay. 
So they're making a, a snow cake, basically. And they don't know how tall it is right here. That's actually what they're looking for. But what they did tell us is the original volume of this box. So remember, volume of a box is length times width times height. I know the volume is 10,000. When I look at the football field, and some of you already know this, the length of a football field from end zone to end zone would be 120. The width of a football field would be 53.5. And then I don't know the height, that's what I'm looking for. So first thing I'm gonna do is on my calculator, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply these two numbers together and then divide it over. Now it comes out to like, oh I forget the exact number, it's one point something. But look at my answer choices. They just want to know would the height be less than one yard, between one and two yards, between two and three. So the answer ends up being between one and two yards. Again, not necessarily a realistic problem, but it's something they would ask on the ACT. The volume of a cylinder. A cylinder would be like a soup can or a can of paint. It's got a circular set of bases and it's regular shape so it doesn't get any skinnier, it just is solid all the way up. So it's pi r squared, which is the area of a circle, times the height. So the end on view of a cylindrical milk tank on its support is shown below. And the interior radius of the tank is 4 feet. The interior, interior length of the tank is 25 feet. So I'm, I'm thinking they're talking about like one of these big metal trucks you see sometimes on the, whoops, ooh that's bad on the interstate uh, and they look kind of scary as you drive by them so you usually drive by them kind of fast because no one wants to be next to them but this guy is 25 feet long and they want to know how much is the volume how much will it contain or hold so I look at my answers and it looks like they do not want it in terms of pi this time so when I go to use my formula I'm actually going to use either 3.14 or pi button on my calculator to determine my closest answer <clears throat> so we're going to use pi r squared, so pi, my radius is 4, so 4 squared, and then the height of this, even though it's on its side, is still a 25. So go ahead and type that on your calculator, it comes out to like roughly 1200 and something. So the closest answer is C, 1300. Okay, a cone or a pyramid. What makes a cone or a pyramid special is that they're no longer regular all the way up. Now they get skinnier and they come to a point. And you're going to notice on both of these formulas, there's going to be a one-third in front. And that's typical for anything that gets skinny in a volume. So if you're talking about a cone, it has pi r squared times height times one-third. Pi r squared because a cone would have a circular base. But if you're talking about just any old pyramid, the base of the pyramid can change. It could be um, a square, it could be a triangle, it could be a pentagon, it could be a hexagon, it could be all sorts of weird things. So it's one-third times whatever the area of the base is times the height. Culver's makes a waffle cone with a radius of three inches and a height of five inches. What's the volume? And please leave your answer in terms of pi. So since I have a cone, I'm going to be using one-third pi r squared times height. Um, one third, I'm not going to worry about the pi right now, I'm just going to kind of throw them on the end of the problem. R squared, let's see, the radius was three, so we've got times three squared, and then the height of this waffle cone was five. So on your calculator, one third times three squared times five gives you a 15, and then because they want our answer in terms of pi, I'm not going to type them on my calculator, I'm just going to leave it as 15 pi. I didn't draw a picture, but I could have. All right, King Tut's car lot wants to make a replica pyramid with a square base. The owner wants to make sure that the pyramid is exactly 6,000 cubic feet and the height is exactly 45 feet tall. So he's got to figure out how big each of the base, the sides of the base are going to have to be. Now here I am going to draw a little picture because it's a little hard to figure out what they're talking about. So pretend that's a square. Woo, that's ugly. Okay, <laughs> we've got a pyramid. So the volume here, since I've got a pyramid, is going to be the area of the base times the height. Oops, and I forgot the one-third, so I'm going to go ahead and throw him on the back end because he does get skinny. Now in this case, it's got a square base, so I want to think about the area of the base. A square would be 
you know, the same size for both the length and the width. Unfortunately, they don't tell me what that is, but I can use variables. I'm going to call them both x. So this time I am going to throw the one-third in front. Um, the area of the base then would be x times x, or x squared. And then the height of this guy we know is 45. Now I kind of forgot a clue. They told us that they want the volume to be exactly 6,000. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 6,000 right here. And now we can go ahead and solve. I'm going to combine the 1 3rd times the 45. 1 3rd times 45, let's see, that would be 15. Hello. So 15x squared. When I try to solve for x, I would first divide by the 15. And we get x squared equals 400. And now when I square root both sides, I get x equals 20. Now I'm nervous that I didn't actually answer the question. They just want to know the length of one side of the base, and the answer would be 20 then. I always get nervous on a multi-step problem because the ACT is notorious for asking you not necessarily what you found for x, but maybe having you do one more thing next. So they could have asked me something like, what's the perimeter of the base, or um, I don't know, all sorts of weird things. So just be careful and read the question one more time before you bubble in your answer. The volume of a sphere, a sphere would be a ball. And it's not often that you have a problem where they don't give you this formula in the ACT, but we just got to be prepared for anything. So volume is 4 thirds times pi r cubed for any sphere. And this problem says the radius is 1 and a quarter inches. What's the volume to the nearest cubic inch? So the only thing I'm worried about here is that my labels match, and they do. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my formula. And since my answers are not in terms of pi, I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply the pi on my calculator. So 4 thirds times pi. Now 1 and a quarter, you either have to write it as 1 plus 1 quarter, or you can change it to 1.25. So either way, go ahead and type that on your calculator, and the answer comes out to roughly 8. It's set to the nearest cubic inch, so we're going to have to round. Okay. The last concept would be the ratio of our sides, the ratio of our areas, and the ratio of our volumes. This is a concept that the ECT likes to throw out there just to see who is paying attention in geometry class. So if they ask you about the ratio of the sides or the perimeter, I want you to write this down. Keep it. That's all I want you to write down for that. Just keep it. Now if they give you a question involving the ratio of the areas, well, that means we're going to have to square it. And it is the original ratio. We'll see an example. And if they ask you a problem about the ratio of the volumes, you are going to have to cube it. So let's look at number 19. The ratio of the radii of two circles is 4 to 9. Now that's our original ratio, 4 to 9. Radii would be just a measurement of one part of it. It's not area, it's not volume, it's just the normal ratio. They want the ratio of our circumference. Well, remember, we said circumference was really perimeter. So should we keep it, square it, or cube it? When I look at my directions up here, it says perimeter, you should just keep the ratio. So the answer is 4 to 9. If they asked us for ratio of area, we would have to square it. And if it extrapolated that to a concept of volume, we would have to cube it. Okay, a large cube has edges that are twice as long of those as a small cube. The volume of the large cube is how many times the volume of a small cube. So they didn't actually give you numbers. So if you know this relationship, this is a really easy question. I'm going to go ahead and write the original ratio as 1 to 2, meaning the little guy is a 1 and the bigger guy is originally a 2 because he's twice as long. Now, if I go back a page, remember what we said about volume? We're supposed to cube it. So I'm going to take my ratio, and instead of having it stay a 1 half, it's going to be a 1 half to the third power. Well, 1 to the third power is a 1, and 2 to the third power is an 8. So it looks like this guy is 8 times as big volume-wise as the little guy, and that's my answer. All right, that concludes the lesson on perimeter area volume and ratios. Your next task is to study those formulas.